Have you heard of the Arduino Remote Sketchbook? What it does is allow you to access all of your Arduino sketches, regardless of what computer you're on, and to update and change them. And what this does is solve a pretty common problem. Maybe you've dealt with it yourself. You write an Arduino program on one computer, but then you want to access that same program on a different computer. For me, I'm jumping from my desktop computer to my laptop computer pretty often, so that becomes a pain. So with the Arduino Remote Sketchbook, what you can do is access all your files from the Arduino Cloud Repository, so you don't have to email the sketch to yourself, or save your sketches to Dropbox or Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever, or, you know, like pull out a floppy disk and put it in one computer and put it in the other. You don't have to do any of that stuff. So this remote sketchbook thing is part of the Arduino cloud ecosystem, which you may have heard of. Arduino's been beefing it up for the last several years. In this lesson, you're going to learn the three simple steps to get up and running with the Arduino remote sketchbook. I will also give you a couple tips for avoiding major mental anguish, as well as an alternative to the Arduino remote sketchbook folder. Let's go. So the first thing you need to do is create an Arduino cloud account. Now the Arduino cloud is an online platform that provides an internet of things infrastructure for your projects. So you can build like IOT dashboards, connect devices, update software remotely, like all that kind of IOT stuff. But what is also part of the Arduino cloud is the Arduino web IDE. And the web IDE is what we're interested in because that's where you're going to find your Arduino remote sketchbook. Okay, so signing up is pretty straightforward for the Arduino cloud. You just click get started. Since you might not have an account yet, you'll click create one. You got to put in your birthday. Pretty typical sign up stuff. So once you've created an Arduino cloud account, now what you need to do is go to the Arduino web editor. So to do that from the main login page, from the initial login page, you just go to the top right to this grid of dots and go down to web editor. It will open up a new page and this is the Arduino web editor. Now the Arduino web editor is an online IDE where you can write code for Arduino. You can actually even load code from the IDE onto boards that you might have connected to your computer. Now to do that, you have to install some other software. It's really pretty easy. We won't go into that now because you don't need to mess with it for using the remote sketchbook folder. So like I mentioned, this web editor works just like Arduino IDE 1 or Arduino IDE 2. You write your code here. You can select a board here. Nothing really too new. But if you look on the left side of the editor, you'll see this toolbar. And if you click sketchbook, this right here is your remote sketchbook folder. So they've already created a first blank sketch for us. And you'll notice they just give it a generic name up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this name. Okay, so here is our remote sketchbook folder. We've got a file in it named Sirius. And now what I want to do is I want to be able to get this file, this remote file, and I want to be able to access it from the Arduino IDE 2 that I have loaded on my local computer. So before we go over to Arduino IDE 2.0, let's just, for sake of demonstration, write something in here, like... And then we'll want to make sure it's saved. Now let's go over to Arduino IDE2 and see if we can access this file on our local computer. All right, so here I am in Arduino IDE 2.0. And on the left-hand side, you can see I got a bunch of icons. I'm gonna to go to this top one that looks like a manila folder. I'm gonna click it. And this is the Arduino sketchbook folder. So all of these files are Arduino files that I have saved in the Arduino folder on my computer, which is the sketchbook folder. But I'm not interested in the files on this computer. I'm interested in the files in our cloud repository, like that one we just made. So to see those, I need to click on this little cloud icon. Now, if I want to see those files, I have to sign in to authenticate. Now, if you have a web browser open and you're already signed in, then it will auto sign you in very likely. You might not have to do any of this authentication, but uh, anyway, it's pretty straightforward. Just click sign in. It opens up a window and you click a couple authenticate buttons. 
Okay, so I went ahead and authenticated. It was pretty straightforward. And now I can see inside the sketchbook panel, when I have the cloud selected, I can see my file here. So in addition to seeing the files in the remote sketchbook folder, you can also notice at the bottom, there's a little green dot that says connected that lets you know that you are signed into your Arduino cloud account. And if you don't see anything up here, just if you see this little refresh button, you can press that refresh button and then maybe it'll populate those files up there. Now, if you look closely at the file that we have in here, there is a outline of a cloud right here. If you click on this little greater than sign, it shows you the files inside the folder. Because every time you create a file in the Arduino IDE, the IDE makes a folder of the same name and puts your file inside it. So when we are on the web IDE, we created a file named Cirrus. And the web IDE created a folder named Cirrus. It did that for us. And then it put Cirrus.eno in that folder. Every Arduino IDE you use will do that. It's how Arduino stores your .eno files. All files need to be in enclosing folders. But you can see we've got two files inside this Cirrus folder. One is that Cirrus.eno. The other is a readme that the web IDE just automatically makes for you. So if you mouse over the Cirrus file, you can see a cloud with a little down arrow. It's a little small. And it gives you a little tool tip that says pull sketch. And what that means is we are going to pull the remote sketch down to our local machine. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. So you get a little notice down here. It says done pulling Cirrus, so the name of the file name. And now if we look over here at the folder, notice that that icon is filled in. So that means that the files inside this folder have been synchronized with the remote sketchbook. So now if I click on this Cirrus.eno, it's going to open up a separate window. And this should be our Cirrus document. And there it is. So this is pretty cool. I have been able to pull something from the Arduino remote sketchbook down to my local computer. But how do I get changes here to go back up? Well, I have to push them back up to the remote. So let me make just a small change in this program. OK, so I made these changes. I'll go ahead and save that. And now let's go over to the web editor. So now I'm in the web editor. And let me refresh this page. Hey, what's the deal? Why is my remote sketchbook folder not updating? Well, here's the deal. In order to get the changes from my local computer up to the cloud, I need to push those files. So here's how you do that. I'll just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. If you mouse over the enclosing folder, you'll see a new little icon of a cloud with an up arrow. And you get a little tooltip that says push sketch. So if I press this, what's going to happen is this sketch is going to go up to the cloud. Now when you press that button, you're going to get a notice that says pushing this sketch will overwrite its cloud version. Are you sure you want to continue? Now, I know I just called this a notice, but I would actually call it a warning because the keyword here is overwrite. Because what's going to happen as soon as you click push is the code that got changed here is going to get overwritten in the remote sketchbook folder. And that means if your remote sketchbook folder was more up to date, you are going to lose all that code. Personally, I wouldn't recommend clicking the don't ask this again button because I think it's a good reminder to make you stop and think like, OK, I know that this is more up to date than the web IDE. I'm going to go ahead and push. So let's go ahead and click the push button. It will give us a little heads up that it's done pushing. And now if I come over to the web IDE and I refresh the page, I can see that my changes were made. So that's pretty cool. All right. So in this last case, what we did is first we started in the web IDE, we made a sketch, and then we pulled it down to our local IDE, Arduino IDE 2. But what if we wanted to create a sketch in Arduino IDE 2 and you know just start there and then push that up remote? How does that work? Well, it can totally be done, and it's super easy. But there's just a tiny caveat. If you're going to start on your local computer, you need to make sure that you create a remote sketch. So how do you do that? Well, you just go up to File, New Cloud Sketch. That's all you have to click. It will prompt you for a name of your sketch. 
and then it will create and automatically push that blank sketch to the remote. So now if I go over to the web IDE and I click refresh, I should see that other file populate in here. And there we go, here it is, so that's pretty cool. Now the other way to do that is just click down here and say new cloud sketch. It goes through the same prompt, it's essentially the same thing. So what about the existing files on your computer though? Can you push those to the web IDE? Unfortunately, at this time you can't. So if I go into my Arduino sketchbook folder, I can't just pick a file to send up to the cloud. But what I can do is go to the web editor and click the import button. And what this does is allow me to import any sketch I want into the Arduino IDE just by selecting it from my Arduino sketchbook folder. Or you can even zip up, if you zip your Arduino sketchbook folder, you can upload that zip file and it will put all of your Arduino sketchbook folder into here in one fell swoop. So that's another way to do it. Now there's a couple things you really want to avoid when you start pushing and pulling files from local to remote or from remote to local. So, I mean, being able to store these files remotely and access them from anywhere is super helpful. I mean, it kind of provides a backup, let's say your computer dies, so that's a really good thing. But the main thing you need to keep an eye on is accidentally overwriting the hard work that you've done in programming. Because remember, when you push and pull, it will overwrite the receiving end. So here's two things you want to avoid in many cases. You don't want to pull old code from the remote to the local. Because remember, when you push and pull, it overwrites the code on the receiving end. So if you're working on your local machine and you've done a bunch of development, and then instead of clicking push, you click pull, now the old remote code is going to overwrite your local code. That's a problematic. The same thing would happen if for some reason you have newer code on your remote. Maybe you were developing in, in the web IDE, you've got a bunch of new code, but then you push an older version of that sketch from your local computer up to the remote. You will overwrite the remote with that old code. So this kind of thing could happen if you develop on different computers or maybe you're using the web IDE and again, you accidentally or maybe just absent-mindedly click on the push to remote instead of pull. Now, if you have any experience working with version control software like Git, then the terms push, pull, and remote likely sound familiar to you. Or maybe you've heard of a website called GitHub, which is a huge code repository, and it's used by millions of developers as a tool for version control. So this begs the question, is this remote Arduino sketchbook thing we just talked about, is that a form of version control or something like GitHub? And the answer is no. The remote Arduino sketchbook is definitely not a version control system, nor was it ever intended to be. But it is fair to say that it's a code repository. It's a place where you can keep your code remotely and share it with others. So is GitHub an alternative to this Arduino remote sketchbook thing we just talked about? It definitely is. However, Git and GitHub do come with a learning curve. You'll need to learn Git, which is a version control system language, and you'll also want to get comfortable using the command line, which is generally how developers interact with GitHub. Truth be told though, Git and GitHub are relatively easy to learn with some repetition, so the juice is worth the squeeze there if you want to take the time to learn it and you're looking for a version control system and maybe you know having a cloud repository. But if you don't want to go through all that, then I think this remote sketchbook folder is super handy. Now, if you're learning all this Arduino stuff for the first time or maybe getting a refresher, it can be pretty overwhelming. And that's why we put together an Arduino masterclass. It's gonna get you up and running with Arduino in no time. Highly recommend you check it out.